We're stressed in, in so many ways, and our body tries to compensate for that stress and keep us on an even keel. And those stresses come from our environment, they come from toxic chemicals, they come from toxic food, they come from medicines that we prescribe, take, and cause their own effects. They come from every time the phone rings, every time a horn beeps, every time your boss isn't happy with you, every time somebody scowls, every time you have an argument with a, a patient or a negotiation for medicines you don't want to prescribe, all these things change stress levels. And our body has to compensate for that. And it compensates for that um, in a similar way as if you were you're running. You know, your heart beats faster, you prepare yourself for fright or flight, you um, try to keep your body together and keep yourself alive as you do that. And you have many mechanisms through your body to help you with that, that all run these, these responses to varying degrees. And not all stresses affect, the same per affect any person the same way. Some people are more affected by this stressor or by that stressor. And our biologic response to that stress may even be different. Not every person responds to the same stress in the same way. So as many as there are people, there are different ways that we all get affected. So looking for things that generally help most people is a good way to go. And for family practice docs and for a lot of us out in the community, herbal medicines can be very, very helpful in restoring adrenal gland function, helping um, mute a stress response. There's an amino acid called theanine that I'll tell patients is a, a form of Valium off the grid. It's not going to be as strong as Valium, it's not going to be as strong as Xanax, but it's certainly going to help. And if we can mute these responses to stress in any way and help the body restore its homeostasis to stress and not have to take dangerous combinations of drugs, reaching for herbal medicine can be really helpful. There's nutritional ways that we need to protect and help our microbiome develop because our microbiome is a big factor in helping us maintain homeostasis for stress. The, um, there's also toxic foods that we need to avoid. So not eating bread, not eating sugar, not eating potatoes, not eating things that drive that or, or hurt our ability to handle stress. So we have a, a do not eat list that needs to be more public. There are very few people that have chronic pain that don't have any stress. And having pain makes even more stress. And worrying about whether you're gonna be in too much pain to attend a function makes even more stress. Or worrying that you can't do a physical activity because it's gonna put you in pain for, for days. You, you can't really separate stress from pain. And then when you're under stress, your muscles tighten and you have more pain. So here you are in a circle that you need to get out of in one way or another. So we work to get out of it by starting with food, by using herbal and, and specific uh, protein medicines, and then by working directly on the body and by working with the mind.